acute sinusitis we all have four pairs of sinuses i'll tell you which are the sinuses see we have one set here that is a maxillary sinus one pair here that is a frontal sinus one pair in the medial side of the eye that is these are ethmoid sinuses and the last sinus that is way behind almost near to the brain that is the sphenoid sinus so total of four four pairs of sinuses these sinuses these have so many functions let me tell you two or three important functions so one is see when you uh, inhale the air the air it has to reach the lungs at a particular temperature so the the function of the nose and the sinuses are it warms up the inspired air that is one two it reduces the weight of the skull that is two now it has got so many other functions i'm not going into the details of that let let us discuss mainly about sinusitis see sinusitis means infection of the sinuses means infection of the sinuses to start with always there'll be an upper respiratory tract infection and that is viral always now the upper respiratory tract infection it involves mainly when you say upper respiratory tract it involves mainly start with it involves a nose which is called as acute rhinitis it is viral so it usually lasts for 3 to 5 days in most of the patients most of the persons now after that suppose it is more than 7 to 10 days that means that acute rhinitis from the infection from the nose it has spread to the sinuses sinuses that means sinusitis starts after when we we suspect that the patient has got sinusitis when the fever or the nasal block or the nasal discharge doesn't go off after the period of 7 to 10 days and if the period of infection is less than 1 month more than 7 to 10 days and less than 1 month that is acute sinusitis and the better better name for this instead of sinusitis we say rhino sinusitis because there is a single lining which lines the uh, nose as well as the sinus but uh, that is that is a better terminolo- terminology rather than saying acute sinusitis is the better terminology is acute rhino sinusitis now how does the infection reach the sinuses one it can be through the nose second it can be through the Uh, through the nose second it can be through the dental source third it can be because of any trauma directly to the uh, to the sinus or it can be secondary to barotrauma pressure difference and last if there is a severe infection of the in the blood that also can reach the sinus and it can it result in sinusitis these are the uh, mode of infection of sinuses now some per, uh, persons are more prone for sinusitis suppose the patient has got mechanical obstruction in the nose deviated nasal septum turbinates are not proper and all this these can lead to because these patients they don't get proper air it doesn't reach the sinus properly so these patients are more prone for sinusitis likewise if they have allergy just like how diabetic patients they are more prone for infection in ent if they have uh, allergy or any other condition which i mentioned the most common being allergy they get the chances of getting infection is very high likewise if you have hormonal changes or inside there are small hair like structures if dress, that doesn't work properly they also get a chance and these patients they get more of uh, recurrent sinusitis acute and it goes to recurrent sinusitis and it goes to chronic sinusitis chronic rhino sinusitis likewise swimming smoking all this can predispose to infection and the patient the child has got uh, recurrent tonsillitis or uh, adenoids these are tissue which is seen behind the nose in the nasopharynx if they have obstruction there chances of getting a sinusitis will be more and sometimes when the patient is admitted in the hospital they are in the mechanical ventilator or the doctor has inserted some tube inside the nose of feeding these patients also the side the, the side where we have inserted the tube that particular side they can they can develop sinusitis these are the pre- predisposing factors for sinusitis so it starts with acute sinusitis it, it can prolong and extend to chronic rhino sinusitis now coming to the complaint of the patients they say they have a headache and facial pain and the area of distribution of the headache and the facial pain it depends upon the sinus which is involved suppose is frontal the area will be here and suppose is maxillary the pain will be here and it can radiate to temporal area and suppose it is the ethmoid sinuses it will pain will be around the eye or behind the eye and suppose is sphenoid it can be here in the temporal area spreading to the vertex or some of them they will say in the occipital behind the nape of the neck also so this is a distribution now this uh, these patients when we ask them specifically 
do, does your facial pain or headache increase on bending forwards? The answer is going to be yes. Likewise, if we ask them to do like this, close the nose and mouth and breathe out like this, if they have sinusitis, their pain will increase. These two things will suggest that they have got sinusitis. Along with headache and facial pain, they'll get nasal block also, nasal block and nasal discharge, which can be coming out anteriorly or it can go posteriorly irritating the throat and they can develop a cough. And they also may uh, complain saying that their smell sensation has come down. So these are the common complaints of the patient. So when we examine and when we touch this area, front and here in this area, if it is painful or it's tender, that means the frontal sinuses are inflamed. So it is frontal sinusitis. So and when we touch this area, that means it's painful here, then it is maxillary sinusitis. If you touch in the medially this area, just medial to the eye on both sides, then if it is tender there or painful, that means ethmoid, ethmoiditis. So uh, this is the, uh, as per the sinuses. So we would like to do a nasal endoscopy. That is, we'll put in a camera in the nose, we'll have a look. So what we'll find is, we'll find pus discharge. This is a diagram, this is a real photograph. So if you find a first pus discharge here, we can make out which sinus is involved. Likewise, suppose the patient has got sinusitis, we have a diagnosis and he has got a high grade fever and severe headache, we would like to take a pus culture for, uh, pus for culture sensitivity so that we can know which bacteria is involved and what, which specific antibiotic can be given against that. So we will do, we'll do that with the endoscope, we will take the pus for culture sensitivity. Now, when you do a blood count, that can help us to know whether it's a bacterial infection or viral infection. Likewise, X-ray and CT scan, let us talk about that. See, normally when we have a patient with all these complaints and he has got a mild fever only, otherwise he is fine and we have a diagnosis of rhinosinusitis, we will go into treatment directly. Suppose the patient says, sir, my headache is more. I'm not able to bear, uh, uh, headache is more and have and I've got fever for past days and I feel it is increasing. In that case, to reconfirm the diagnosis, we would like to take an x-ray. And in very few patients, what happens is acute sinusitis can result in complications. And the patient will say, sir, I have developed a headache which I'm not able to bear the headache. And if I ask them, is it an unbearable headache? He says, yes, I have never experienced like this. It's very head, severe headache and I feel like vomiting. So that means sinusitis has gone into a complicated stage. If that is suspected, I would like to take a CT scan also. So normally, even an X-ray and CT scan I used to avoid. We don't need. So only in these two conditions, three conditions, we need to take a plain X-ray will be more than enough unless it is complicated. So what, let us see the, about the X-ray first. So X-ray, this is a normal X-ray. This is X-ray in a patient with sinusitis. So normal X-ray, when you see the X-ray, the sinuses inside will be black in color. That means there is air inside. See in this picture, so the left side sinus, it is white in color. That means there is, and there's a fluid level like, that means there is an infection on the left maxillary sinus. Likewise, the CT scan, if you see the sinuses inside are black in color, and here, if you see on the right side, it is white in color. That means there is sinusitis on the right side. Now, coming to treatment. The most best treatment is bed rest, soft balanced diet, and try to avoid oil, and drink plenty of water. That will do more than 50 or 70 percent of your treatment. Now, why I'm telling you this? Because most of the sinus that is start with it is viral. You don't need, uh, and along with that, maybe you need a Calpol or Dolo along with that. That'll be enough. So, if suppose the severity of the sinus that is, is more, then we'll advise you nasal wash so that your nose block goes off. Especially so if the patient is, has, he gives a history of severe allergy. We'll give nasal wash. Nas uh, nasal wash, or you can do stimulation also. Stimulation to start with first two, three days, you do twice daily. After that, you can do once daily when the condition has improved. So stimulation can be with plain water or you can add up any one of these. It can be eucalyptus oil, five or six drops, or you can add up tulsi leaves, five or six in number, or it can be pin, mint leaves, which we call in India like pudina leaves, or it can be a clove, cavender, 
rosemary oil this are essential oil rosemary oil or it can be uh, what you get over the count in the pharmacy like carol plus cinnarus uh, plus see this uh, uh, turmeric powder is also good see turmeric powder you can it's got so many functions or so many actions like it is antibacterial it is antiviral it is anti uh, fungal it is antiseptic it is antioxidants and i can say tell you a few more these are very good just few drops of olive or few drops like five or six drops and the leaves when you add up to the water four or five leaves will be more than enough it is very, so this is very good now uh, another thing i want to tell you is that when you use carbol plus and cinnarus plus what most of the patients that do do is it comes in a small capsule like they open the capsule and they empty the whole canton into it try not to do that so what you do is you just the first few days just put half of it and the rest half you put you keep in the fridge in the side door why i am saying is that when you empty the whole content into it depending on the water content when you content the or empty the whole content into it some of them they get irritation of the face and they stop doing the steam inhalation so better than that you you put half of it and start doing it as and when you are getting used to it you can put more same thing applies for cinnarus plus also now when you have pain you will be prescribed painkiller first 3 4 day 3 days you take regularly after that you take painkiller only when it is needed so antibiotic generally it is not needed because to start which it is always viral we start giving antibiotic in the first visit suppose a patient has got he has got uh, we have a diagnosis of sinusitis and he has got high fever which is increasing we will we will prefer to give what there is one second is when you have a pus uh, in the when you do endoscopy we find we find pus there and we have sent for pus culture sensitivity it has come positive for a bacteria we know which bacteria and which particular antibiotic to be given there also we will prefer to give an antibiotic likewise when you do a blood count and that also shows there's a bacterial infection it can be a total count or it can be c reactive protein uh, when that also shows there's a bacterial infection then also we will prefer to give antibiotic otherwise generally we don't prefer antibiotic and this antibiotic duration is going to be 5 to 7 days now talking about surgery it is very less done in patients like in acute sinusitis unless the case has become complicated from acute sinusitis it has gone gone into a complicated stage complicated otherwise no 95 to 98 percentage we manage just with medical management surgery we do and we see which particular sinus is involved and with the help of a endoscope that particular sinus is made free of disease and the the fun and the sinus is made to come back to normal its function is returned back to normal so it's called as functional endoscopic sinus surgery now the take home message i have already told you the best treatment for that is going to be bed rest and balanced diet and drink plenty of water other than that what you do is you have to wash your hands properly and regularly and try avoid to touch your nose again and again that is one then if you have the habit of smoking please quit smoking that is another and if you are already have a diagnosis of allergic rhinitis and your doctor has already prescribed some medication do not stop it please continue with the medication and you are allergic to speci- specific thing try to avoid that wear a mask so that you are also safe the, the allergen is not in contact with your nasal air with your airway and it doesn't spread to somebody else also now i have already mentioned one route of spread to the infection is dental so your dental hygiene has to be very good and the thing which i want to tell you is suppose in spite of all this medication you have pain in the night and you're not able to see properly so try to apply some warm compression over the sinus which is involved that can help you to soothe the pain to decrease the pain last with the place where you're working or where you be in the in the room so try try to avoid to uh, try to avoid cold environment so if it is warm little warm is better for you so switch off the ac and try to be in a warm environment and if you have a humidifier please do use use a humidifier so that the water content of the environment increases the air increases and the sinus cilia and the sinus comes back to normal at the earliest so this is how you manage acute rhino sinusitis thank you so much